We've all had negative things happen to us. People did us wrong. The company let us go. A clerk was rude. A friend betrayed us. It's easy to go through life offended, in self-pity, blaming ourselves, our co-workers, even blaming God. But when we're always looking back, reliving the negative, we end up carrying around all this baggage that weighs us down. One of the best things we can do is learn to drop it. Let it go. Whether it happened 20 years ago or 20 minutes ago, don't carry negative baggage from yesterday into today. You won't live a victorious life if you're always reliving what didn't work out. Who hurt you? The mistakes you've made? The reason it's called the past is because it's done. It's over. It's history. Now do your part and let it go. When Joel, my fiancé, walked out on me, he broke my heart. That's why I'm bitter. They hurt you once. Don't let them continue to hurt you by always thinking about it. That's going to keep you down, discouraged, with no passion. As long as you're dwelling on it, you're going to miss the new things God wants to do. God said He will give you beauty for ashes, he will take what was meant for harm and use it to your advantage, but you have to do your part and drop it. Quit thinking about it, quit reliving it, and move forward. There's a new beginning in front of you, but God will not release new opportunities as long as you're reliving old hurts, old failures. You may have had a lot of negative things in your past, weren't fair, rough childhood, your business didn't make it, you lost a loved one, you could easily go through life with a chip on your shoulder, not trusting anybody, bitter and resentful. But everything you went through deposited something on the inside. You're not defined by your past. You're prepared by your past. You're stronger. You're more experienced. You have greater confidence for the things ahead. If that hadn't have happened, you wouldn't be prepared for the new levels that are coming your way. Don't go around with the poor old me mentality, feeling sorry for yourself. I've heard it said that you can be pitiful or you can be powerful, but you can't be both. You may have made some mistakes. Perhaps you blew your marriage, didn't raise your children right. You have a lot of regrets, but you can't do anything about what happened yesterday. Living guilty, condemned is not making anything better. It's time to drop it. Empty out that negative. If you'll get rid of that baggage, you'll not only feel a weight lift off of you, but you'll step into the new things that God has in store. The scripture says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It doesn't say where the Spirit of the Lord was. God has freedom for you today. But if you're always thinking about yesterday, last month, last year, there's no freedom there. That's where the Spirit of the Lord was. This is a new day. There are new victories, new relationships, new opportunities. Quit living in what was and come over into what is. Right now, there is freedom for you. Right now, there are new beginnings. Right now, there is joy, peace, restoration. Crying over what happened yesterday doesn't bring freedom. Living in regrets of what you should have done, what you could have been, isn't at all productive. Being upset, offended, frustrated over what didn't work out will only keep you in mediocrity. It's time to drop it and move forward. You may be a product of your past, but you don't have to be a prisoner of your past. Nothing that's happened to you was a surprise to God. When He laid out the plan for your life, He already knew every person who would hurt you, every loss you would go through, every mistake you would make, the good news is, for every setback, God has already arranged a comeback. For every disappointment, He has a new beginning. For every failure, He can bring restoration. For all the ashes, He has beauty. Now you have to put your foot down and say, that's it. I may have been through some disappointments. I may have made mistakes, but I'm not going to waste the time I have left worrying about what I could have done better bitter over what didn't work out, upset over who did me wrong. I'm leaving the was and I'm coming over into the is. I'm dropping the offense, dropping the self-pity, 
dropping the blame, dropping that failure. I'm done carrying negative baggage. I'm going to live my life free. Here's the key. If somebody did you wrong, leave it up to God. He'll be your vindicator. If you made mistakes, quit beating yourself up and receive God's mercy. It's new every morning. If there are things you don't understand, you worked hard but you didn't get the promotion, you did your best but the marriage didn't make it, instead of dragging around that negative baggage, you have to be mature enough to say, God, I don't understand it, but I trust you. I know that you wouldn't have allowed it if it wasn't going to somehow work to my advantage. So I'm not going to get bitter. I'm not going to live looking back in my rearview mirror. I'm going to keep moving forward knowing that my best days are still ahead. The writer of Ecclesiastes said, Better is the end than the beginning. You may have had a rough start, but you don't have to have a rough finish. Better is the end. Maybe you had a disappointment. Somebody broke your heart. A dream didn't work out. The medical report wasn't good. Don't get stuck in what happened yesterday. Don't keep dwelling in the negative. God is saying something better is coming. There may be some rough spots in the middle, but don't stay focused on the betrayal. Better is coming. The loan didn't go through. Don't sit around in self-pity. Better is coming. You prayed and believed but the medical report wasn't good. That's one report, but God has another report. He says that better is coming. Receive this into your spirit. Better is coming. Healing is coming. Breakthroughs are coming. New opportunities are coming your way. The Apostle Paul went through a lot of adversity. He was falsely accused of crimes, beaten with rods, put in prison. Often he went without food, was shipwrecked, on and on. And yet he said this in Philippians 3, I'm still not all I should be, but I'm bringing all my energies to bear this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Here's a man who wrote nearly half of the books in the New Testament. He could have said, I focus all my energy on being a better writer, on improving my leadership skills, on impacting the culture more effectively. But instead, he said in effect, what's more important than all that is letting go of what lies behind and pressing forward. He knew that if we carry negative baggage, it will keep us from our destiny. If he hadn't learned this principle, he would have become bitter, discouraged. God, why did this happen to me? Look at what I've been through, it's not fair. Other translations of Paul's statement highlight just how strongly he felt. This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. He was saying, I don't do everything right, but this one thing I'm good at, this one thing I have down, I know how to let go of the past. Paul was an expert at dropping it. Sometimes we spend more energy holding on to the negative past than we do letting it go. What if we would do like Paul and start focusing that energy on dropping the offense, dropping the guilt, dropping the self-pity, dropping that hurt and moving forward? How do you drop it? It's simple. Quit thinking about it and quit talking about it. Don't rehearse negative things that have happened to you. The reason some people never see the better is they're always opening up old wounds. Every week they rehash with their friends. Can you believe what so-and-so did to me? It may have happened 27 years ago, but they're still dragging it up as though it happened yesterday. If you're going to get free, you need to learn to not only drop it, but you need to bury it. Have a funeral for it. Put it away once and for all. Decide that you're not going to talk about it one more time. That betrayal, the disappointment, the injustice is dead. It's over, it's in the past, it's buried. If you go dig it up, it's going to stink. It's not only bad for your own heart, but nobody's going to want to be around you. Several years ago, I was coming home from a night of hope. We usually leave home on Thursday and come back on Friday night after the event. On this trip, I had forgotten to take any extra socks. I put my socks on Thursday morning, traveled to the city, did a book signing that day, 
walked around outside, had several other activities. The next morning, I put the same socks on, went to a gym, worked out. Later, I did the Night of Hope, shook hands with hundreds of people afterwards. It was a long, hot evening. I had perspired a lot. When we finally got on the plane to fly home, I was tired, took my shoes off, put my feet on the chair in front of me, and Victoria nearly passed out. She said, Joel, put your shoes back on. Your feet stink so badly. I said, they don't stink. They smell fine. I couldn't smell a thing. The problem is when you stink, many times you don't know it. When you're mad at somebody, offended at your neighbor, carrying around unforgiveness, bitterness, you may not realize it, but it's making your life stink. It's pushing people and opportunities away. Why don't you get rid of the stinky stuff? There's an amazing future in front of you. Beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, dancing for heaviness, but you have to move forward. Maybe you need to bury that mistake you've made. You've lived guilty, condemned, down on yourself long enough. Have a funeral and put it behind you. No more talking about it. No more letting the accuser make you feel unworthy, telling you you don't deserve to be blessed, you're a failure. Those lies will stink up your life. Quit letting the negative play. When the defeat, the mistake, the hurt comes back on the movie screen of your mind, do yourself a favor, change the channel. Have the attitude, not going backwards, not living in regrets, not rehearsing my failures, I'm moving forward. May have had some bad breaks, but I know better is the end. If you'll get your mind looking forward, your life will go forward. Pay attention to what you're dwelling on all day. Listen to what you're saying. How much time and energy are you giving to the negative things of your past? Guilt, offense, blame, discouragement? You only have so much emotional energy each day. When you spend that energy on negative things, call in a friend, talk about what somebody did to you three years ago, rehearsing failures, focusing on negative reports, that's energy you should be using to move forward. You have to get out of the was and step into the is. Don't say another word about that breakup, that disappointment you went through. Don't tell another person about the mistake you made. That's over and done. You had a funeral. You buried them. Now don't talk about it anymore. Don't relive those losses one more time in your mind. You determine what you think about. The difference between people who are positive, happy, expecting good things, and people who are negative, discouraged, bitter, is simple. People who are negative hold on to the past, while people who are positive have learned to let go of the past and move forward into the good things God has in store. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. His truth will be your shield and buckler. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at night noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus was talking about what we should do when someone does us wrong. He said, forgive them and let it drop. Leave it and let it go. Notice the principle, drop it, leave it, let it go. When someone is talking badly about you, it's easy to get upset, be offended. Try a different approach. Drop it, leave it, let it go. God will fight your battles. Someone betrayed you, walked away. Don't spend another minute 
bitter. You're not hurting them. You're poisoning yourself. Drop it, leave it, let it go. You took a step of faith. You started a business, but it didn't work out. Don't let that sour your life. Three simple things. Drop it, leave it, let it go. God has something better. You prayed, you believed, but your loved one didn't make it. The relationship didn't work out. You could be bitter. God, why didn't you answer my prayers? Drop it, leave it, let it go. The reason the scripture says to leave it is because you're going to be tempted to pick it back up. You may drop it at first, but the next morning when you think about what they said, you'll want to pick up the hurt, pick up the bitterness. There was a man in the scripture named Ahithophel who was one of King David's right-hand men. For over 25 years, he served as an advisor and close counselor to David. But when David's son, Absalom, attempted to take over the throne, Ahithophel was one of the first to desert David and go with his son. Ahithophel began to advise Absalom on the steps he should take to overthrow his father. But when Absalom didn't take his advice, Ahithophel was so distraught that the scripture says he went out and hung himself. After so many years, why would a trusted advisor of King David suddenly turn on him? Many scholars believe that Ahithophel was the grandfather of Bathsheba, whom David had an affair with and whose husband he had killed before taking her as his wife. Could it be the reason Ahithophel turned on David so easily? was because he never got past what David did. Instead of forgiving David, dropping it, leaving it, moving forward. He smiled on the outside as David's trusted counselor, but the poison of unforgiveness was simmering on the inside. What David did was wrong. In the natural, Ahithophel had a reason to be upset, angry, bitter. But when you carry around that negativity year after year, you're not hurting the other person, you're contaminating your own life. You don't have the creativity, the favor, the blessing that you should have. Ahithophel had everything going for him, was successful, respected advisor to the king, but because he wouldn't let go of that negative baggage, it cost him his life. He missed his destiny. Don't let that be you. Don't hold on to bitterness, unforgiveness, and guilt. Let it go. Well, Joel, I don't understand why all this happened to me. Why did this person do me wrong? Why did I come down with this illness? People ask me, why did your mother get healed, but my mother didn't make it? We're never going to understand everything. Don't get caught up in the whys of life. The scripture says, we see in part now through a glass dimly, but one day we will see in full. One day it will be clear. If you're always trying to figure out the whys of life, you're going to get frustrated, bitter. The best thing you can do is drop it. Leave it alone. If God wants you to know why, He's God. He'll tell you why. But if He's not revealing it to you, you need to let it go. Some things God doesn't want us to know. Proverbs says it is God's privilege to conceal things. If you're going to trust God, you have to accept that there's going to be unanswered questions. We have to be mature enough to say, God, I don't understand why this happened, but I'm okay without understanding why. I don't have to have all the answers. You're God and I'm not. I trust that your ways are much better than mine. Maybe there's something you've gone through that doesn't make sense. Quit trying to figure it out. Go back to what you do know. God is for you. He has you in the palm of His hand. He will somehow use what you've gone through to your advantage. My challenge for you today is quit looking back. Get out of what was, come over into what is. God wants to do something new, but you have to let go of the old. Don't be like a Ahithophel and hold on to the things that are going to poison your life. Be like the Apostle Paul. Focus your energies on letting go of what lies behind. Is there something you need to drop? A hurt, a failure, a disappointment? There's no better time than now. Make a decision that you're gonna drop it, leave it, 
you're not going to go back and pick it up again. You're going to let God be your vindicator. You're going to receive His mercy for mistakes you've made. If you'll do this, I believe and declare, like it says in Ecclesiastes, better is coming, joy is coming, healing is coming, favor is coming, the fullness of your destiny in Jesus' name. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. The thoughts we think can either lead us down paths of hope, joy, and victory, or down paths of fear, discouragement, and hopelessness. One of the ways we can correct the course of our thoughts is by changing our words. David knew the powerful combination of thoughts and confession. He prayed, let the meditations of my heart and the confessions of my mouth be pleasing in your sight. Today, I encourage you to declare and meditate on this faith-filled confession. I declare that God sees me and loves me. He has good plans for my life. No matter the challenges in front of me, through Christ I am full of power, strength, and determination. Nothing I face will be too much for me. I have the grace I need for today. I will overcome every obstacle, outlast every challenge, and come through every difficulty better than I was before. I will not worry. I will not doubt. I will keep my trust in God, knowing that He will not fail. I declare that God is working all things together for my good. My future is bright and getting brighter. God has good plans for me. It's not too late to accomplish everything He has put in my heart. I have not missed my window of opportunity. God has moments of favor in my future. He is preparing me for the next season. I will give birth to every dream He has given me. I will become everything He has created me to be in Jesus' name. My friend, you don't have to live weighed down by the heaviness of guilt, resentment, doubt, worry any longer. You can live a life of joy, peace, and victory. Decide today, I'm not going to hold on to bitterness, offense, negative thinking anymore. I'm going to make room for the good thing God wants to do in me and through me. I choose to empty out the negative. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.